Hey guys and welcome to Fez Airsoft where today I'm going to be doing a disassembly of this Jingong JG103 T3 MC51. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this video today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because those interactions are going to help the channel get seen and grow. Uh, use the link to the link down below to visit all of my socials, including my merch store, which has now launched um, sales anywhere in the UK, uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, and if you want to like to support the channel a little bit more, channel memberships are now open, 99 pence a month using the join button down below. Uh, it is only 99 pence a month. You get custom videos and your own chat area. Totally optional. Massively appreciated if you did do that, though. So we've got the MC51 by JG. Uh, and we're going to do a disassembly. Hopefully diagnose any issues with it, particularly related to the 7.4, not turning over the gearbox, and to the low, very low FPS. And we're going to see what we can find. So let's get started then. I'm going to push this body pin out. Get rid of that. And that rail unit will just come forward and off. The muzzle brake is just a 14mm thread, negative thread as per usual. Now if I took out the grub screw here, um, pretty sure, and this screw sling point, point as well, this front end would come out. And if I remove these two screws, and I think this screw, uh, the front assembly would come out as well. Now I'm not too interested in these at the moment, uh, because I'm more interested in why the charging handle won't go all the way back. So what I'm going to do is release the stock all the way out and release it again to get it out of the way. I'm then going to get a flat head on these. Now I've got my finger on the underside of this screw because it will just literally just drop out the other side without any sort of uh, friction. There goes the thing. Now, these screws in here are very similar to this screw here, but a different size. So make sure you keep the stock screws together and separate from the um, mag release screw because they are different. That was out of the way. Now, I'm going to carefully pull this off because inside, there we go, um, I'll show you this bit first. This sling loop that's come from the left hand side, it sits inside like that. So just, if it does come out at any point, that's how it sits, get that out of the way. And then there is this little metal bit here that helps to spring lock the stock. Now, Pretty sure there should be a plastic thing in there as well, to uh, like a little plastic notch on top, but we'll worry about that later. Next thing I've got then is I've got the wiring coming out the back. So there is a Tamiya and then there is a fellow head. So if I pull the fuse holder out first, ooh, there's a fuse holder. And it gives us access to, see, these wires should be going down there. So let's pull that out of the way. Let's get a Phillips head in there. And let's release that Phillips head. There's the Phillips head. And there's the little plate. How have they even got that back in? Let's see if I can release that from there. There we go. So just, that is literally a mini Tamiya onto a mini Tamiya. So I've just released those apart and that'll let me get that plate out the back. Now I'm going to remove this front body pin here. Get those out of the way. Again, remember this, this front pin is different to that back one. So keep them separate, and then I believe, is it at that point then that it just slides, it just slides out. Oh no. So 
that would possibly explain why the 7.4 is wasn't isn't turning this over because it's nice and crunchy because it wasn't in the right place basically it had been run down the wrong way and i can see there that it's gone the wrong way down there as well so that would also explain as to why that power cable was so short and shouldn't have been because that should be much further forward and they should as a pair of wires sat down there ow damn it stop myself on the little wire sticky nut um, they should have sat down that track there basically out of the way of everything and anything uh, and that definitely should have been much longer like that because that is about where the connector should have been coming out the back so we'll just slide the barrel and hop out and have a look so the barrel the hop is roll up to apply hop it is spotlessly clean that that is the hop fully on and it was hopping two fives with absolute ease with that not an awful lot of hop applied so i would assume with that amount of hop you can hop much uh heavier bbs um so next is our gearbox then i am wondering if the misalignment was was off that is it does feel like a soft, relatively soft spring in there though um so i've got the gearbox assembly um first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this little plate here which is the selector system So I've got a tiny little Phillips head, which is too tiny. Right, let's try that one. Now be careful with this that you don't go at it too much. You need to not round this screw out. Okay, so it was rounding. And I've managed to fortunately get a little flat head that basically managed to just get enough purchase to remove it. I was having a mild panic then. Get those out of the way. So now that should really allow me to pull the selector clean out, which it does, and that will just drop out. Now the selector has like a D-shaped end to it, and this has a D-shape in it. So the two will only fit together in one position. And the white line matches where the selector's pointing. Make sure you don't lose that little screw out there because uh, they're nearly impossible to find a replacement at times. So I'm just going to unscrew the base of the pistol grip there. I'm just going to hold it down as well. That's one. So it's definitely been opened because the gunfire quality control sticker is actually stuck inside the gearbox casing the wiring looks like it's been crimped a little bit in places i don't know how well you can see this but the damage on the heat shrink in the pistol grip i don't know if you can see that that damage on them That motor was semi wedged in there. Now that's unusual. Those are hex head bolts in there. That's a bit different. Alright, so I've used a Torx on it. I've used specifically a Torx 8 to remove that pistol grip screw. It does seem unusually small heads on the screws. There's the other screw. Right, and then the pistol grip should just 
wiggle free and loose. Now that came off a little bit harder than I wanted. Luckily enough, it didn't damage any more damage than what was already done on those. And then the gearbox will drop out. Now I'm going to be careful to catch this as it comes out. In fact, I'm going to flip it over that way because there it is. So when we put this back in, it just goes, show you the orientation of it. So it goes in like that basically. And that'll connect with your selector is squared off at the bottom of this post and that sits in there. I'm gonna put those out of the way. So our gearbox then is the typical JG Black. We've got a metal select plate, uh, plastic select plate. We've got metal bushings. Um, Fairly bog standard JG gearbox. So we've got, I'm guessing, their T10 screws. And they are. Make sure you line up all the screws properly so you know where everything's come from. Right, so that's the screws out. Before I actually do this, let's just check now. Just fully open and expose what will be the hot unit, but we'll look at that later. So, because I can't, it's not a quick change spring, I'm just gonna have to shove a screwdriver in the back and hold that down while I release that. And let that go. So that is a fairly beefy spring which has been clipped. That is a clip mark there. That spring has been clipped down. I assume that's a standard length that they work to. And looks like it's been clipped at that end as well and stuck over the spring guide as well. Wow. Uh, so we've got our two-part metal spring guide. We've got... Wow. That is a shim that's out of place that is chewed up and damaged quite a thick shim as well we've got well greased though I'm going to release the tap it off there to take the gear set under compression let's pull that piston back right let's lift this up there we go. So that is an MP5 air nozzle, an MP5 um, tappet plate. That looks like a bit of rubber. Excellent compression as I would expect. Absolutely excellent compression. Let's see what it's like with the air nozzle on. Again, excellent. Obviously, I can push air out, but that's because it's not an O-ring. It's not a ceiling type, so it will allow some air out. I'm happy with that. The gears, there is some effort to shim. Obviously, there is a shim being allowed to wander loose. Um, but the gears look in good condition. There's no evidence that would suggest that they are sort of grinding on each other from bad shimming or anything. And I am generally happy with that. So let's go for the reassembly then. So the anti-reversal latch then, I've put the spring on. I'm just going to sit it in there. I'm not going to put that gear back in until I've got the rest back in here. So I've got the cylinder and cylinder head and the air nozzle in there. The tappet plate clicks into and should just move the air nozzle up and down like that. They should be linked together. Where did the spring go? There we go, look. So the tappet plate spring I'm going to hook on and if I flip it over, 
I've got it to the lower point, so it's going to go on this peg here. I'm going to spin that gear backwards. Oops. There we go. So what I had to make sure was this wire will keep jumping out. This was an issue I think before. So this little spring goes all the way down on this peg, making sure that the cylinder head, the lug hole on the bottom is in position and the piston is on its runners there. Happy with that. Next thing to do is I am going to make sure that the trigger is sat properly, which it is. I'm going to pull the anti-reversal latch down. I'm going to wind the gear back against it to try and create some pressure against it. Then I'm going to bring my spring in. Which has got barely any compression. And there went the, I don't know if you noticed it then, but the anti-reversal latch sprung. Um, no, it's okay. That's quite a short, tiny little spring. So I've pulled it back, I'm just compressing it downwards with my thumb. Oh, shim dropped off there, off the bottom. Got to make sure that's not uh, free roaming in the gearbox. Okay, and now I'm gonna quickly throw the top on, just hopefully. Nope. Do you know what? AK24 has said, uh, who I absolutely love their website, the parts on there are outstanding, the service is outstanding. They have said that the next time I order, I will get a free helping hands to uh, help me hold this in place. And do you know what? I need to just get an order done. The uh, grease inside is, is quite good as well. It's not uh, overly greased in, in any way. Okay, everybody hold on to your butts. Oh, did I catch it? Did I catch it? Oh, yes, I did as well. Oh, lucky. Right, so the gearbox is back together. I might just go and cry in a corner for two minutes. So let's get this back together. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I forgot to pull that sticker out. Oh, let's lift this just at this end a little bit. And then let's use that. Let's pull that out. There we go. Right, now let's get these screws back in. So that's the gearbox back together then. So we're gonna drop it back into the lower. So I'm gonna put the cam in first. I'm just gonna drop that into place like that. And then I'm gonna keep the body rotated this way. Whilst I drop that in on top of it. There we go. Nice and secure, nice and easy. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in this selector. 
So that should be the safe, and it is, because I can feel that there's a trigger pull in there to be had. We we'll flip it over, and then we're on safe. That will only sit easily in one position, so don't force it down, because you, you'll take it out of position. And then I'm going to try and get the... Uh, Now what I'm not going to do, is because it is already damaged, I'm not going to over tighten it, I'm just going to loosen it in. What I will do is, once I've sort of got all this running as it is, I'll possibly just thread lock that into there. Because um, I don't want it coming out anytime soon. I might even sort of pre-source myself a replacement as well. So the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to put the pistol grip back on. So I'm just going to drop, the wires literally just go in, red at the front, black at the back. Drop those in. The pistol grip slides up these tracks from here and then wiggles into place. It's quite a firm fit on this one. Sometimes it can be a bit looser. And then when you use T8 to put the pistol grip screws back in. one end there's only two places there's only like literally two holes to secure this down so you, you literally can't go wrong putting these these screws in place and now my bits there we go there's my ta bit and then the motor can drop back in place with its spring on, so red to the front, black to the back. I'm going to put it in sideways just because I didn't want the spring to come off. I'm going to re-bend that and drop that on there. I'm going to bend that and drop that on there. I'm just going to position the wires so they're out of the way. See, that doesn't make me happy either. Now, that... See that way around. This is shaped, so... You can see this bit here, that goes to the back there. I'm not best pleased about that. I feel like I need to put a little bit of tape. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on that just for now. So I went to get some tape to basically put on the connector. And it's actually even worse than I thought. Because look, it's actually, there we go, it's broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish reassembling it to show for the video. Then I'm going to sit and cry a little bit and then I'm going to strip it down another day and actually repair it and get it working. So what I will be doing is either fitting a MOSFET and replacing the wiring solely and running it out the back or I'll fit a... Well, it's going to be a MOSFET anyway. Uh, I might just, I don't even know. A little bit I'm annoyed actually. So let's get on with it. Enough complaining from me. Um, so I'm just going to put the wire on there. Uh, I'm going to position it out of the way carefully so it doesn't get crimped down. So this is shaped. Uh, it does look like the little motor plate is glued in or greased in there, which is good because otherwise it's a pain. So we're just going to sit that on top of there and we're going to compress that down. It should just freely move up and down uh, on the spring. It shouldn't need any um, sort of like, you know, it shouldn't be wedged at all. It should just freely move. So we'll tighten that down. Tighten that one down. That's the pistol grip back on. And the sticker's obviously pulled back out at the front there. Nothing appears to be wrong with the nozzle. So now I think we are ready to slide the body back in. So again, I'm not even gonna bother repairing this wire at this minute because I'm gonna replace it all anyway. I'm gonna have it wired to the AR type stock. So 
lay that flat down there because that is the track it should be in in that bottom corner there and then I'm just going to very carefully position that in Ow. and then oop, missed a bit at the back there Put it in there. And the hop unit doesn't seem to want to go all the way forward because guess what? The wires are in the way. So I wondered what was wrong. It's uh, the barrel's basically just stuck at the end there a little bit. So I thought it was the wires, but it's actually just caught on the end bit there, just stopping it going all the way forward. So it did come forward. All I needed to do was there's like a little rubber bung in the end. I would just take that out, just use a screwdriver to centralise it, and I can put that back in and put the flush hider back on, muzzle brake. Uh, so the wires then go back in their little track. Here comes the gearbox. It is fiddly to do this and get these in the right place. I'm just going to slightly go off camera with a touch just to position that in the right place. There we go. Still there, it slid nicely into position. The wires are coming out of the correct place there. There is just enough that that wire will loop back around onto that once I've put the um, plate back in and then this can be tucked into there. So at this point, I'm gonna bring the trigger uh, screw back in. So it's got little teeth at the end, so it should drop it into place and it should sit flush like that and expose it there. So I'm just gonna tighten that down. Fetching the flat head. That's that bit done. Next, I'm gonna fetch in this back plate here, which basically secures all this down. There is only really one way that this will go in. And it should sit like that. Drop this in on the end of a Phillips head. Tighten that in. Next, I'm going to put the Tamiya on. Not as much point. That's connected in. That then feeds up and into there. These wires fold over. And then they're all nice and neat and out of the way. And this framing keeps them from getting compressed and nicked. So I'm then gonna bring in the little uh, thing that we had. And then I'm going to slide on the stock cap. There we go. I can drop the screws in again. These have got teeth in them. And they should sit flush to the body like that. And present you the chance to screw it in. Just 
going to finger tighten this one out. Do the other one. There you go. It's come flush. Stock back in. Runs into its runners. So pull on the release. Nice and solid. Jobs are good on. And then we can bring in what well, the correct length there for the Tamiya. Just get it positioned. Pull that out of the way. Loosely put the body pin in just for now because I'm going to be stripping it down again probably tomorrow. Gone in, and then all it's missing because it's rolled away on the floor is the muzzle brake. There we go. And there we go. It is fully reassembled with the wiring back where it should be minus the free floating um, uh, shim just as a side to show you how to fit one of these so using the little allen key the hex heads you just need to loosen these off so let's see if i've got one a torx 8 works perfectly so I'm just going to loosen these all off. You don't need to take, release them. Just loosen them right off. And then you should be able to then get them around either side of that. And then basically what they're going to do is sit underneath these lug points here. And then it might be that you do have to take at least one side off. Um, to, in fact, is it a T8? Is that even... So a couple of minutes just messing with the screws. Uh, and I've now got it flat and exactly as I would want it, so I can mount um, anything I want on there now. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed that. For once, I have not enjoyed that. It's actually angered me significantly. Um, yeah. This made me quite angry. So, um... Please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you found that useful. I hope you've seen where the weaknesses are and sit uh, and you know, know how to avoid them, or diagnose them and identify them. And uh, Please make sure you use the link to your link down below to visit all my socials and my merch store. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.